Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I took the FE exam in January 2018 and I remember it being fairly easy. Now, during the exam, I've had some really easy questions and I don't recall that many conceptual questions. Now, a few weeks ago, I was on Reddit and I came across some comments and some people were mentioning how they only studied for 10 days and they passed the FE exam or they recommend to just go through the reference handbook and you'll be fine because the FE exam is really easy. And I was actually really shocked to see those comments. Now, some people might not need to study for the FE exam and they're just naturally good at taking tests. But I feel like for the majority of us, we do need to study for the FE exam. We do need to prepare for it. And the FE exam is not easy, especially considering how it has changed over the years. Now, in some ways, I think the FE exam has gotten harder and it includes more conceptual questions. Although I can't really retake it to confirm this, but my reasoning is based on feedback we get from hundreds of students, comments we read on Reddit, and the NCS interactive practice exam, where the questions came from 350 retired FE questions, which means those questions were part of the real exam which closely mimics what you might see on the exam. And if you have taken the interactive practice exam, you probably noticed some really tough questions. So all of this really got me thinking, if I had to take the FE exam in 2025, would I study any differently? Now, before I answer this question, the way you guys study really depends on your graduation date. It's a major factor. So if you're a recent graduate, and the material is still fresh in your mind, you're probably just going to need something that's going to help you review some of that material. But if you've been out of school for a while, you're probably going to need something more intensive. So I'm going to break this down into two scenarios. Scenario one, how I would study for the FE exam if I was a recent graduate. And scenario two, how I would study for the FE exam if I've been out of school for more than three years. So if I was a recent graduate and I did really well in college and I grasped most of the concepts and I still have my college notes, I would absolutely use my college notes to study for the FE exam. And in fact, that's exactly what I did when I was preparing for my FE exam. I printed out the NCS specifications and I just made sure that I was studying the topics that were on there. The other thing I did is I watched a couple videos from Professor Gregory Michelson. Although his videos are a bit long, I think he still covers some great FE problems. Now, here's what I would do guys differently this time. In addition to my college notes, I would also get a three month subscription from Prep FE. And here's why. Now, College notes are great and they're gonna help you guys understand the concepts and tackle those conceptual questions but they're not always tailored for the FE exam. See, Prep FE offers questions that are designed for the FE. The other thing too, if you go to Reddit, you're gonna see that a lot of people are using Prep FE and they find it very helpful and their prices are reasonable. Just a quick note, guys, this video is not sponsored by Prep FE. I am simply sharing my honest opinion of how I would study for the FE exam in 2025, and I hope these tips will help you guys. Now, I would also recommend that you guys take a lot of practice exams. When I was preparing for my FE, there weren't a lot of great practice exams that actually mimic the exam environment. I found a lot of free practice exams, but they weren't great. PPI had one and I just felt like it didn't reflect the actual exam's difficulty. If you want to know which practice exams I'd recommend now, go ahead and comment below every practice exams and I'll go ahead and do some research and then I'll make a video on that next. Also, if you guys are looking for some good FE problems, make sure that you guys download our FE box. So we have FE Civil, FE Mechanical, and we're going to launch FE Other Disciplines soon. And these books has over 100 FE problems. And every problem, there's actually a link to the YouTube video where you can check the step-by-step -step solution. So make sure that you guys grab it here. Now, let's say, guys, I do all of that. I use my college notes, I get prep FE, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, I take the FE exam and I fail. 
At that point, I would completely change my approach. And one mistake I see students make is repeating the same study methods while expecting different results. If you fail the FE exam once or twice, you can have to pause and figure out why you keep failing because something you're doing that's not working. And this is going to lead us to scenario two. So if I fail the FE exam or if I've been out of school for more than three years or I didn't graduate from the U.S., Here's what I would do. The first thing I would do is consider getting a course. But before I pay for it, I would actually see if the company will cover the cost of the course. And I'm going to share with you guys on the next video how you can ask your company to pay for your FE courses because I've seen our students do that. So make sure that you guys like this video and don't forget to subscribe so that you guys don't miss out on any future videos. Now, if the company doesn't want to pay for it, I will invest in myself and I will pay for it myself. Now, here's the thing. Not all courses are created equal and they can be expensive. So I would actually spend a lot of time researching which course will fit better my schedule and my learning style. Now, when I was preparing for the FE exam, I used to work for a construction company and I used to wake up really early to study for two hours before going to work. Now, in terms of learning, I can learn from both books and videos, but I do prefer to learn from videos just because I feel like when you have an instructor that's walking you through the steps, explaining the equations and the concepts, you tend to remember that information better and you learn faster. So with that in mind, I'm going to share with you guys the things that I would look for and avoid in a course and then also which course I would get. Now, the first thing is I would avoid life courses. And here's why. I feel like life courses are usually more expensive than on-demand courses. The other thing too is I am a morning person. So I like to wake up really early to study, which means I like to go to bed early. And a lot of these life courses usually happen in the evenings. So I would probably miss them anyway, which makes it pointless to pay that little extra. The other thing too, even if I did study in the evenings, I feel like sitting to a three hour lecture after such a long day at work, it would be very difficult and I'm not going to grasp as many concepts. And if I miss a lecture or two, I'm going to feel really behind and I feel like that will really stress me out and discourage me from studying. And so I feel like life courses would just not work for me. Now, the second thing I would avoid is courses that offer long lectures. I think lectures are great to learn concepts, but I also feel like they can be concise and to the point. It's really difficult to sit through a three hour lecture on engineering concepts. I feel like I would only retain 20 or 30 minutes of it. Also, I feel like the most effective way to prepare for the FE exam is just to do as many problems as possible. And so basically, I would look for a course that has short lectures and plenty of practice problems. Now, the third thing I would avoid is courses with no instructor walkthrough. So I would actually try to look for a course that provides step-by-step -step solution to all their problems in a video format because if a course is just going to give me a bunch of problems with the solution in them without an actual walkthrough, I just might as well get a book than getting a course and it'll probably be cheaper. So it's very important for me. If I'm going to pay that much money, I really need an instructor that's going to help me understand the problems so that way I can learn faster because that's the whole point of getting a course to help you get there faster. The fourth thing is I would try to look for a course that has the most access. I know Jenny Prep is the only company that offers lifetime access to the courses, but assuming here that Jenny Prep doesn't exist, I would look for a course that offers at least six months of access. So that way I don't have the pressure to rush through the material. I really like to take my time to learn the material and feel prepared to take the FE exam. And it might cost you guys a little bit more for the six month access versus three months, but I feel like it's better to pay that a little bit extra than losing access completely and pulling, paying for the full price again. Now, the fifth thing I would avoid is courses with multiple instructors. See, it takes time to get used to teacher's style. And so if there are too many instructors, I'm going to constantly be adjusting 
to their teaching, which is going to slow me down. And so I would look for a course that has only one or two instructors tops. Now, I would also try to watch a sample lecture from the instructor. I think I would feel better about that. Like if I can see how the instructor is going to teach just to see if it's going to fit my learning style. Cause there are some instructors that assume that you knew, you know, the information or they skip steps or they don't take the time to explain the steps. And so it would make me feel better if I can see the instructor teaching the lecture or going through a problem before I purchase the course. Number six, I would check the pass guarantees carefully. So some courses offer a pass guarantee with lots of terms and conditions. So I would read the fine print so I know exactly what I'm getting into. Number seven, I would look for personalized support. So I would actually email different course providers and see which one will get back to me quicker and which one is willing to schedule a call with me because I feel like if they're willing to do that, that's usually a good sign and that means that they might support me in case if I do need them when I start preparing for the FE exam. And then also I would actually try to look for interviews or testimonials where students talk about their experience with the course and how it helped them pass the FE exam. And finally, I would try to avoid companies that are recommended by certain YouTubers or articles because those endorsements are often affiliate based. So if I purchase using their code, they're getting a percentage of the sale. And since there's an incentive, I can't fully trust their reviews. Also, some of these influencers have no engineering background background, they never studied for the FE and they've never taken the FE exam. So why would I trust their review? In my view, the people who truly qualify to leave a review on an FE course are those who actually took the FE course and passed the FE exam. Now, the other thing I want to share with you guys is I found this article that actually compares the different FE courses and it offers valuable insights into what's available. So I will leave the link in the description below in case you guys want to check it out. Now, which course would I choose? Well, if I had to choose a course, I would probably go with Jenny Prep if it were available. But of course, I'm being biased here. But we do check out all the boxes. So we do offer short lectures, step by step solutions to all problems in a video format. We have a lot of free content on our YouTube channel where you can see my teaching style. We also have over 80 interviews from students that pass the FE exam using our courses. We offer lifetime access and we provide continuous support. Even if you're not a student, we will still help you because our mission is to help as many engineers as possible to excel in their engineering careers. But let's say Jenny Prep doesn't exist or it doesn't offer courses or you just don't like my teaching style. For FE Civil, I would actually look into Civil Engineer Academy or Direct Hub because they have YouTube channel and you can see their teaching style and then also they have testimonials from students. So I would probably do more research on both of these courses to see which one will fit better my schedule and my learning style. Now for FE Mechanical, FE Electrical, or FE Other Disciplines, I'm actually not as familiar with courses outside Civil. But if you guys are looking for recommendations, just go ahead and comment below your discipline and I will look into it more and I will give you guys my honest review. If you are taking FE Electrical, there's actually a course out there that is similar to Jenny Prep where they have short lectures, a lot of problems, and they might even have a YouTube channel, but I would have to look into it more before I recommend it to you guys. So if you guys are interested, just go ahead and comment below FE Electrical course, and I will cover that next. Now, if you guys are looking for courses that's gonna help you pass your FE exam, make sure that you guys check out our courses at jennyprep.com. So we have courses for FE Civil, Mechanical, and we're going to launch FE Other Disciplines soon. So if you guys are interested in that, you can sign up here. Now, basically, whatever you guys choose, either college notes, prep FE subscription, or courses, make sure that you guys do a lot of problems. Make sure you pick resources that matches your learning style and your schedule. 
and make sure that you cover what's going to be on your exam. Th that is the key to passing your FE exam in 2025. Now, if you don't have a lot of time and you want to learn the information that's going to be on your exam and and you're not sure how to do it, make sure that you guys check out this video here where I basically share how I study and it's going to help you guys to study less and learn more and pass your FE exam in 2025. So make sure that you guys check it out. And if you need a roadmap for your FE exam in terms of what you need to study, study plan, how to study effectively, how to stay consistent, make sure that you guys check out this playlist here because I cover everything that you guys need to know to pass your FE exam in 2025. So that's it guys for today's video. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. And if you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for joining me. And I hope you have a great productive week. And I will see you guys on the next video. A la prochaine. Oh yeah, everybody now.